Hello, we are continuing to develop our Spring Boot service. We will start where we stopped last time. So we have set up the Maven project and also configured the POM file. Now it's time to configure connection with the database. First step we have to take is to create application properties file inside the source main resources package. Now we have to give this file a name and it must be exactly the application.properties. Now we can click finish and here is our configuration file. Over here first thing we have to define is the URL of our database. So we have to type spring.datasource.url and after this we have to provide the url of our database so we are using java database connectivity driver for the postgresql and our database is located on the local host and we want to connect with the database that is named postgres Second thing we have to provide in this file is the username. So we have to type spring data source username. We will use default PostgreSQL user, which is Postgres. Next on the list is the password for this user. So we have to type spring data source password. And in my case, it will be also Postgres, but it depends what you have provided during the installation of the PostgreSQL or if you have changed it after this. Last thing we have to set up is spring.jpa.generate-ddl and we set it to true. This line will allow JPA to initialize database. Okay, so let's save this file. And now we can go to the source main Java, right click it, select new and package. Now we have to give our package name, so it will be students. And after this, we click finish. As you can see, our students package appeared right here. So now let's create a new class inside. So we right click, select new, and we choose class. It will be the entry point of our application. So we want to check this checkbox over here. And also we want to name this class application. Now we can click finish. And after a moment, our class is generated. Also, you can see that Eclipse generated for us main method over here. Now, to make our application a Spring Boot application, we have to mark our class with annotation. So, above our application class, we have to use add sign, and after this, we have to type Spring Boot application. You can see that we have error and that is because we don't have any imports so we will quick fix this and the error disappeared now we have to run our application to do it we have to go to the main method and over here we have to type spring application now we have to call run method on this class and as you can see, Eclipse already imported this class for us. If we hover on the name of this class, we can read that this class can be used to bootstrap and launch a Spring application from a Java made method. And this is what we want. To make it work, we have to change the first argument of this method to application.class. So we are just saying to the Spring that application class is the entry point of our service. Okay then, now we can save the file and let's create new package inside the source main Java. So let's right click it, select new and the package. 
We want this package to be inside of the students package. So we have to type students. And after the dot, we have to specify the name of this package. So it will be models. And after this, we can click finish. Okay, as you can see, the package is over here. And inside this package, we want to create a new class. So we select new class. This class will be the model, which is kind of representation of data from the database. And we will call our model student. Okay, we are not checking this checkbox over here now because we already have entry point of our application. So we can simply click finish. And here is our student class. We want our students to have three properties. First one will be ID. We want this ID to be private. So we use access modifier private. Uh, it should be the type of the long. And we want to call it ID. ID will be a unique number that will identify each of the students. Every student will also have name. So again, we type private. And since first name is a text, we will use the string type. And the property will be called first name. Every student will also have last name. So we type private again. It's also string and we type last name. Since our properties are private, we can't access them from the outside of this class. So we have to create some getters and setters methods. To do it, we will use Eclipse feature. So we right click. Now we can select source. And over here we have option to generate getters and setters. We click it. And over here, we can select for which properties we want to generate getters and setters. We want it for all of them, so we select everything. And now we can just simply click generate. And as you can see, Eclipse generated everything for us. We will also need two constructors. First will be the default one. So we again right click. Select source and over here we want to select this option generate constructor using fields. Since it is the default one, we don't want to check any of these fields and we want to check the omit code default constructor super. And now we can click generate. And here is our constructor. Okay, we also need the second one. So we do exactly the same. But this time we want to check the first name and the last name. And we click generate. Okay, let's clear this class a little bit. So first we press Ctrl Shift F to format the code. And also let's move these constructors over getters and setters over here. Okay. You can see that this is a simple Java class which one we will now modify to make it work with the JPA and also database. First step to do it is marking our class as the entity. So we go over the public class student and over here we are using at sign and type entity. As you can see, we have error here. So I will just paste all the imports we need in this class. We will also use second annotation to specify table associated with this entity. So we go under the entity annotation and we again use at sign and we type table. And between the parentheses, we type name equals to students because this is the table in our database. Also, we need to add the annotations for each of properties in this class. At first, we will mark our ID property with the ID annotation. By using this ID annotation, we are saying that this ID property will be the primary key of the student's table. 
Also, we want this ID to be auto-generated value. So we will use another annotation. And we use add sign and we type generated value. Like this. And now we have to specify the strategy of generating this value. So we type strategy equals to generation type dot auto. For the first name and the last name, we will use column annotation. By using this annotation, we are mapping the property of this class to the column in the table. So we type name equals to first name. We will do exactly the same for the last name property. So I will copy this and copy the last name and replace this. Okay. We have one last thing to do before our class will be ready. And this is making our class serializable. To do it, our class must implement serializable interface. So we go to the declaration of our class and we type implements. And after this, we type serializable like this. Okay, then now our class is ready. We can save it. And now we can create another package. So we go to the source main Java. We right click on it. We select new and now package. Our new package will be also located inside the students package. So we type students and the name of our package will be repositories. Now we can click finish. Inside our new package, we will create interface. So we right click it, select new and we choose interface. And our interface will have name student repository like this. Now we can click finish. In the first place, I will paste the imports that we will need in this interface. Now our student repository interface should extend the crude repository interface. To do it, we have to go to the declaration of our interface and we have to type extend keyword. After this, we type crude repository. Okay then. As you can see, this interface needs two generic parameters. First one will be class name of the entity associated with this repository. So it will be student in our case. And the second parameter will be type of the primary key of this entity. So it will be long in our case. So now student repository inherits from crude repository several methods to work with the student entity. We can perform actions like saving, deleting and also finding entity in the table. Okay, now we can save it and create another package. So again, we are going to the source main Java. We right click, select new and now package. This one will also be located inside the students package. So we type students and the name of this package will be controllers like this. Okay, now we can click finish. Now inside this package, we want to create new Java class. So we right click it, new, and we choose class. We will call it student controller. And now we can click finish. Okay, so entire logic of our application will be located in the student controller class. I will start with pasting all the imports that we need in this class. To make a controller from the class, we have to use REST controller annotation. So we go above the class declaration and we have to type REST controller. So now our class became a REST controller. And now we can use methods with request mapping annotations to handle HTTP requests. But before we do that, first we have to wire up our student repository. To do it, we have to create 
uh, property or field that will be the type of student repository so we type student repository and now it will be named repository okay now we have to mark this field with auto wired annotation so spring will know to inject this dependency we will use this repository in the next video when we will be creating the full functionality of our web service and now let's just create the method that will return hello world when we use get http request this must be the public method so we use the public keyword and it will return string and we call our method for example get hello world we will not pass any parameters so we can leave empty parentheses and we can take care of the body in the body we want to create string variables so we type string and we will name it message and we will assign to it hello world so hello world okay now we just want to return this message so we type return keyword and the message variable last step is marking our method with a request mapping annotation so we use at sign and now we type request mapping over here between parentheses we have to specify on which url path we want to activate this method so we have to type value keyword and we want to assign the path so let's say it will be greeting like this okay so finally after all these steps we can test it out just before we test our service right click on the project select maven and update project here make sure that this one is checked and click ok now we have to select our application java because this is the entry point of our web service we right click it we select run as and we choose java application and after a moment application should be ready to go okay so our web service is up and running we can access it on the local host port 8080 so after the slash you can also see the greeting and after our web service gets this greeting the method get hello world will be called and the string hello world will be returned so let's hit enter and as you can see our web service returned hello world okay then this is everything for this video in the next one we will play with the database we will check out how to save students in the database how to delete them and also how to retrieve data from the database remember to subscribe the channel and like the video and stay tuned for the next one see ya